Now, around the world, more than half a trillion cups of coffee are consumed per year. But do you really know where your daily brew comes from? Well, IBM is teaming up with major coffee players to bring out a new app that traces your cappuccino back to the original farmer. Joining me in the studio is Tatiana Meyer, Senior Managing Consultant at IBM in Switzerland, who in fact helped build and set up this project. Um, to kick things off, a lot of us drink coffee maybe on a daily basis, but we don't exactly know where everything comes from. So from A to Z, give us a quick explainer of how that works. When you look at the coffee supply mm. chain, it is quite a complex and there are many stakeholders involved. Just, you know, it can be as up as many as nine different parties or even more. Like you have the farmer that grows the coffee, then it's the cooperative where it's getting all collected, the exporter, the shipper, the importer, then it's getting roasted in the country, and then you have a distributor, a retailer, and it all ends up then finally in your cup of coffee you enjoy, you enjoy in the morning. So it's quite a lengthy process. Um, it's lengthy. I mean, you've just named, I mean, a dozen players yes. along that process. And with so many steps, I mean, where do you see problems arising along this trail? Where can issues of transparency mm. and ethical practices come up? Yes. As you mentioned, first of all, it's the traceability, so the end-to-end -end visibility. Because with such a big supply chain, you have just fragmented information. You don't have the end-to-end -end view. That's one thing. Secondly, it's as well for companies, the operational efficiency and transparency. And when I talk about transparency, it's transparency for within the supply chain, but as well the transparency for the end consumer that's lacking. So IBM is essentially launching a new app and you want customers to be able to put a face to the, a farmer the next time they buy a cup of coffee. Yes. So if I'm walking or if I'm going to a cafe, mm -hmm. how is that going to work? Mm -hmm. So you basically have your mobile app, you scan the QR code, and then you see the Thank My Farmer app, and then you can trace on an interactive map, you can see where the coffee comes from. So basically the, the journey of the bean, right? Really from the farmer, where has it been harvested, in which region, uh, where has it been shipped, and the, the whole processes. Yeah. Uh, Tatiana, I have to ask you at this point, the, the big question is, why do you think consumers will actually use this app? What gives you the confidence mm. that consumers are going to pull out their phone, scan a code before taking a sip? Because I think very much it's, uh, I don't know if you can say it's a zeitgeist thing, so people want to be better informed, they want to know what's ongoing, they want to know that their coffee has been, not only coffee but in general their food, that it has been processed in a in a sustainable way and in a fair way. And they want to have the information quickly at a glance at the hand. And I see that with my team, with the younger generation, the millennials or the early 20s, you know, in, in, their, in their 20s, they want to have this information quick and they take up their, their out their, their app and scan. But even on that note, I mean, in the market, there are other initiatives out there mm. dealing with blockchain, trying to trace coffee, trying to track food, um, even one with yeah. Starbucks and Microsoft. Yeah. So. These have not been integrated, I guess, in our day-to-day -day lives. Mm. What do you think is holding it back from, I guess, mass adoption? I think what, what our big difference is with Thank My Farmer app, that not only can you trace it back to the farmer, but you can directly connect with the farmer by seeing not only where the coffee comes from, but as well making a donation. So you see, let's say uh, this coffee has been produced in, uh, in Colombia and... Uh, and then you can really um, donate to a sustainability project in the area and you know that the money is really ending up where it's supposed to end up. Now the aim is really trying to tackle the global coffee market but at the moment you're starting quite small, you've only got two coffee brands under that mm. umbrella. So would you say that at the moment it's still quite a very niche consumer market that you're targeting? Mm, no, I think you, you have to start somewhere, right? And then you're building it up and that's... Uh how you do it. You don't start, you know, you have to convince as well the ecosystem and you're starting and I think we have some quite some major brands already on board and coffee merchants on board. So um, it's a fantastic start and we're building it up and that's exactly what we're going to continue to do in 2020. Okay, so let's take a look at one of the partners that you're working with, a Swiss trading company, coffee trading company, Sukafina. Yes. What is the interest of coffee traders in this new app? Essentially, how could this change the commodity mm. business? When you, when you look at it, coffee prices, especially for commodity coffee, that's historically low. 
So um, quite often in some countries, the production costs are mm -hmm. higher than what the farmers get for the coffee, which means if you don't make sure that the coffee, the farmers earn a decent living, they are going to change and uh, not going to grow coffee anymore, but change, and with that you don't have a coffee supply at hand anymore. So it really is as well uh, the interest of the industry to have this transparency, to make sure that you have sustainable and fair wages, otherwise you're not going to have coffee anymore in the future. Very interestingly enough, I mean, this project or this idea was basically born out of Switzerland. Correct. What resources do you think Switzerland is offering that maybe other countries cannot for this project? I think, uh, and, and a lot of people actually don't know that Switzerland has a huge, uh, it's quite uh, important when it comes to coffee tra tra trading, coffee commodity market. And uh, that's why uh, Sukafina and PharmaConnect, together with IBM, we, we started the project for more than a year ago where we actually already had a pilot and worked on that. So Switzerland is important. We have the, um, the market. How do all these coffee players, especially competitors, feel about teaming up together? Um, it's always, uh, I mean, this is not only for the coffee market, you see that in other blockchain projects too. There's still quite often a little bit of um, reluctancy, hesitant. People are hesitant because all of a sudden you have to change your mindset. You have to work together with your competitors. We say uh, you have to go from competition to competition, really working together. Why? Because you have an industry problem that you want to solve together because you might not be able to solve it on your own. Has IBM also tapped into the fact that Switzerland is a blockchain hub in itself with about 800 blockchain companies? Have you tried to utilize that kind of knowledge at hand? I mean, uh, Switzerland is really well known for the crypto, mm. the crypto value, the cryptocurrency. IBM is concentrating more on uh, blockchains for, for businesses, so it's a bit of a different angle. But obviously, we're using uh, the information and the technology and the knowledge as well, yeah. Okay, so this is really part of a bigger trend. I mean, this is not the first time that IBM has made a foray into blockchain. Mm. It's also trying to track seafood. For example, have those other bets paid off? What have been the results? Oh yeah, I mean, uh, the IBM Food Trust that you mentioned, mm. we launched IBM Food Trust and it's public available since October 2018. And uh, there, um, it's, it's the initiative started with Walmart and it's getting uh, bigger and bigger and there are lots of uh, participants on the blockchain. And in Europe, it's for example Carrefour and we see that initiative spreading. And blockchain is very much, um, as we said, uh, a team sport. So you do have to make sure that you have as well uh, the ecosystem onboarded and that the ecosystem is part of the blockchain because otherwise it's not going to work. Okay, quickly to finish up. Um, as you mentioned, IBM Switzerland, um, they've also got a lot of know-how in blockchain over here. Yes. What is going to be the priority in the technology in 2020? What are you working on? We are going to work, continue to help PharmaConnect to succeed. First of all, that's uh, because it is a Swiss-based uh, project um, and a Swiss initiative. We have other initiatives that we are bringing forward. We have, for example, a project around the uh, foundation of new companies uh, and the commercial registration of companies uh, where we have a project to bring it down from several weeks to, to um, two days, 48 hours. So, so can we expect bigger investment into blockchain? In IBM, the coming year? blockchain is a growth uh, area for, um, for um, IBM. So we are going to continue to invest in blockchain and working together with our partners. Okay.